Well, welcome to oh. another Workshop Wednesday. It is September already. Wednesday, <laughs> September. What's the year? Ew, let's not talk about that. <laughs> right. I saw something uh, the other day. It was like, uh, man, I can't believe it's September already. It seems like it was just March, like 17 years ago. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? The time is just standing still and going so fast at the same time. I think that we've come a long way since March. I feel better, don't you? I do, I do. Well, welcome again uh, for another Workshop Wednesday. Today's workshop is all about handling consignments. So, uh, Carrie, let's talk about what, what a consignment actually is. What, what, what so, is it? <laughs> so oftentimes when a, let's just say you have a retail shop and there's a new product that somebody's trying to get you to sell and you're not sold on it yet. So they say, well, why don't you see how it'll sell before you have to stock up on it? So you don't own that inventory. You just agree to try to sell it. So that creates a dilemma because you haven't, you have nothing to add to your books. And so the, advantage, the advantage is, is that to a business owner, you don't have to buy the inventory. You have right. something to sell, but you don't have to buy it ahead of time. <clears throat> so right. in that regard, it's, it's, uh, it helps your cash flow uh, as a business owner because you don't have that money tied up <clears throat> until it's sold. So it's a, it's a pretty good return on your investment when it comes to you know, deciding the way to do that and, and high ticket items like cars and furniture, uh, pretty good idea. I mean, it's pretty cool to do it that way. If you have that, that kind of arrangement and we had a used car and, um, you know, there was a consignment car dealer. So I took it down there and they had it on their lot. So, you know, it, it's better than me doing a private sale, uh, because, you know, know I have to, I have to figure out, you know, do I post it on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace or, or something like that? He's got a car lot with, you know, people coming to the car lot. So it's, it's a better win for me as a seller and a better win for them as, as, as a business, because they didn't have to buy it off me in order to sell it. So, um, but yeah, like you said, that does bring up some, dilemmas how do you track that yeah <laughs> right. right so that's what we oh. wanted to talk about today and, and the different ways to to kind of handle that uh so one thing uh, you know that you you want to ask yourself right is is do you want to carry this in stock right because then it would make it an inventory item and then you have a, all all to deal with that but we're gonna we're gonna talk about in general just to how to account for that right carrie Right. Yeah. Cause there's the, like he was saying, there's two ways you can do it. You can track it as your inventory, which causes dilemma at the year. You know, if you want to do that at year end, then you have to figure out how to get it off your inventory because you didn't pay for it. You got these open bills and you got to deal with that. So that's one way you can do consignment. We're going to talk about how to do it it's a little less information than you would get as running it as your inventory, but it does the same similar job. It's good enough, right? You don't want to load up with too much data. So, right. Okay. And, and if that's something that your business uh, or your client's business handles on a regular basis, then it kind of leads to those, those kind of decisions and those questions when you, when you talk, when you're working with them, you know, do you, uh, do you want to handle this as inventory? If we do, then we have this this option. So, Carrie, you want to share your yes. screen? We'll kind of walk through uh, this this kind of procedure. And I am going to put in the I can see my screen. comments. I can see it. Good. You never. Know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want the wrong screen open. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. So, so you're going to show the through. you're going to show the desktop. Uh, and I'm going to show the the uh, the QuickBooks Online uh, way to way to kind of handle this. Now, yes. um, what we're what we're what we're doing here is we're going to handle this with accounts and classes. Uh, so um, so first we need to set up a class, and we're going to set up a class for each individual consignor, and that would be the person you know person that's come that that is coming in, 
uh, to, to say, hey, I've got a car or furniture or um, whatever it is that I'm going to uh, consign uh, for, for you. And, and uh, so we'll set them up as a class first. So you did that there. And then we want to create two, uh, two income or two expenses, uh, two accounts, one an income account and one an expense account just to track the consignment income and the consignment expense separately. Okay. So one, yeah. So one income account and one uh, expense account. Not cost of goods, but just expense. No. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I mean, you can again. You can do that if you want. The cost of goods sold. If you if you prefer to have it as a so you have your gross profit there, right? Yeah. Which would you prefer? I would like cost of goods sold. Thank you. <laughs> cost of goods sold for a hundred, please. Consignment, expense, payout, whatever. This is yeah. how this is what you're gonna write. This is the check that I'm gonna write to Dan, my consign yeah. person. When it's when it's sold. One's an or and one's an E. When it's sold, Dan will get it'll go here. Okay, got it. So I've got so now my we're gonna, we've we've set up an arrangement and we're like, okay, this is how much I want to be paid out when it sold when it sells, and then you can sell it for whatever you want, and then you just get to keep the difference. So um so we're going to create a new item right. and, and we can create this item as, uh, as, as a generic item, or we can create it as, you know, individual. And that would be, you know, if you're really wanting to track the, what you have on, on hand, um, you know, if you're, if you're a retail store and you've, you've got to actually create uh, a barcode for that particular item, um, you know, that, that sort of thing is going to, determine whether you need it to be individualized or not, but we're just going to create a, a, a generic item here, your Dan's car, and then okay. you want to mark I'm, that. I'm going to check this button to, to give me two sides. Right. If I don't do that, it's going to get lost. Right. And so I'm going to say old car by Dan, whatever I want to show up on the invoice. And Dan and I have come to the agreement. Now, let's just say retail shops, clothing, you don't typically mark it up. So if you pay $50 for a pair of pants, you're going to sell them for a hundred. So, but Dan and I have a deal because I'm the one selling it for him. So I hope to make more money. Right. right. So right. he's going to give me a deal. He's only going to charge me 400 for the thousand dollar car. And I'm going to use that new consignment expense. My preferred vendor is going to be. Oops, we didn't send it. Set it no, up. You didn't set me up as a as a vendor. Now but we the, can if we want. And right here. Right on the fly. <laughs> on the fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm going to sell it for a thousand dollars. Now I'm going to leave taxable because in the state of ba ba ba, it would be taxable. <laughs> Why I'm adding it to the item code, so I don't have to. Can you imagine if you don't have this set up and you're selling it and forgot about sales tax? So let's do right. this part right. And then consignment, not expense, because it's going to take you to a zero move. You want to mm -hmm. point to the right account. Right. Your consignment Boom. income. Many right. C accounts. All right. So that's gives now I'm ready to sell Dan's right. car. Now to set it up ahead of time, because you know, you're you're gonna need to pay me. Right. When when it's sold. So what we can do to kind of get ready, get that, get that set up to be able to do that is create a purchase order for yeah. that consignment item. And the reason we want to do the um, we want to do a purchase order is right. because it's non posting. Mm -hmm. We don't really have the expense until it's sold. The class I'm going to carefully use Dan. No, Dan's everywhere. <laughs> um, and then the item code Dan's car. And when we sell it, it will then become a bill. So right, right. now we're getting it just, just going to sit in the hopper until we're right. ready. Bam. So now that's so that way, that way you've got it set up and ahead of time to be able to, you know, cause once it's sold, then you have to go and actually, you know, pay, pay, pay the consigner. Right. So okay. setting it up as I wanted to see if this item's on a purchase order. Uh, I somehow I was trying to add that column. Somehow it just flew away. You tried okay. to get fancy. I got fancy <laughs> on the fly. Never get fancy on a, in a live demo because that's when nothing works. Because right. it'll only show that. 
Will it only show that on a uh, on an inventory item? If we had oh, there you go. That's what's wrong. Okay, it, it, he's good point. So yeah. once again, <laughs> note to self. <laughs> note to self. Um, if you call this a non-inventory part, that's the problem with that. So you right. know, you could always. It's up to you. I like to call right. it inventory. But go on. <laughs> right. So now. Now, hooray, it's sold. So you want to bring up the sale. Uh, so yes. we can either do that as an invoice or, or a sales receipt. It's depending on how you, know, how you ring up your sales sale normally. Receipt. Yeah, I like invoice, but um, oh, customer. You're not going to sell it to me. <laughs> no, I'm going to sell it to my favorite customer, ABC Plumbing. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do Can't that. Sell that. Yep. All right, Dan's car. And I'm so excited. I sold it for a thousand dollars. Oh, what did I forget? The class. Got the class. And then you know what happens when you forget the class there? You got to make sure it's on the on the line if it needs to be. Yeah, nope, it's not it doesn't on need that. To be. We're good. Okay. You know, if there's. But you that. Because you set that item up ahead of time, it pulled the sales price. Um, you know, the right sales price from. Oh, you don't have to go get a notebook and go, what did I say I'd sell it <laughs> What did for? I say I was going to. What was the arrangement? So by setting it up as an item first, you'll have that, be able to ring that up a, a lot faster. Uh, so we want to save it. Okay, save it. Um, I'll just pay cash because I can. I've got that yeah. much cash in my pocket. Oops. Always got to uncheck the old email later. <laughs> All right, save. And now it's sold, now, but we have another step. Now, I need to, now you need to pay me. So yeah. now we can turn that... Uh, that purchase order into a bill so we can receive, uh, you know, enter the bill as soon as you put me on the vendor and it's going to say, Hey, fine. you've got, you've got a purchase open purchase order. Do you want to receive against that? Select it. And then it will just copy those items to the bill. Uh, put in your, you know, your, your, your reference number, cool. information like that. Don't forget the class. And the class is on the individual line. So we're good there, but it's always good to just cover your bases. Right. So there's the bill. Save and close. Save and close. And then, you know, under normal circumstances, you would then, you know, pay the bill, write the check, however you're going to actually uh, pay that. But now when you go to profit and loss yep. and show those columns by class. Bam. Now we've got a, a, a setup. <clears throat> uh, we've got a column that is just the, uh, you know, the, the Dan column. <laughs> and then if you want to do this, you know, and customize this just for your consignments, what you can do is, is customize the report and filter for just those two accounts. Right. So it's up at the top, multiple accounts. And if you just search for consignment, if, if I can spell it, if you can spell it, then you can just, check Oh, I can even off. It, select all. Yeah. All right. Click. Okay. So now we only have, we have our, our gross profit of uh, 400 or $600 because we had the bill set up and then we have the, uh, you know, the invoice or sales receipt bringing up the, the income. So that way you can keep track of, you know, on one report, you can memorize it. Uh, you can see what, I just changed how those arrangements are working out. Um, if you have other, uh, other consignors come to you and then you can take a look at that report and, and make some decisions like, okay, well, this one was $600. How much work did I actually need to do that, do for that? Um, and then you can allocate other, ooh. you know, other ooh, expenses ooh, ooh. into that. That's my favorite button right there. Hit the percent <laughs> and it shows you your margin. There you go. I'm like, Hey, Dan, you have any more cars? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, you know, on the fly, I had to change my agreement. You know, I had to change the sales price or I had to change. Maybe he, his agreement, I put in the notes that he wants to have 30% of whatever I sell. So you exactly. put those notes in there. You don't, you're not stuck with the sales price and the expense, right. but it gives you a starting place. So that's, that's like a, uh, an easy way to kind of handle, uh, handling consignments, uh, just so that the accounting is correct. Um, there's a lot more questions than answers in, in, in this setup uh, to be able to, to, to do that. But uh, this will allow you to 
you know, create a report, see it in, in all in one, one place. Uh, so I'm going to kind of run through what I've done for uh, QuickBooks Online uh, because Carrie's shown the desktop. And so let me share you that. Can, and you can translate, while he's getting that pulled up, you can translate this workflow even in point of sale, QuickBooks point of sale. Um, yeah. So, um, so I already went ahead and oh. uh, created the the list. Uh, so what I did was I created a, a, a parent class and then started creating um, ah. each consignor as a subclass. Because uh, that way, if you're using classes for something else, in addition to tracking consignment, you can then filter your reports even for, further for just those those classes. Um, and then you kind of have them grouped together. Um, so it gives you a little bit more, more flexibility. Uh, so I used Bob, Bob and Jane <laughs> there. I, now, the challenge is that if you're using a plus, uh, you have a limitation on the number of classes and locations that you can use. So uh, if you're going to use classes in this, in this situation, you might hit that limit if you're if you're using plus, because you only have 40 combined between the locations and the class. So then you may need to upgrade to advanced if this is a, a deal breaker or, or you really like the way this is, this is working out with the, um, uh, with the reporting. Right. So we've got and if you're, yeah. I was just going to say, and if you, if you haven't purchased yet, the best way to get those discounts is to make sure you're getting the right product to start with. So don't right. go into plus until you max out because you'll lose that discount. That's just my right. <laughs> side. So note. I already, I already created the item. It's a non inventory item. I just used a, a generic uh, consignment item. I chose the class on the item itself. So that way I'm sure that the uh, class is going to be assigned and then I can modify it to the individual consignor. Uh, during that time period, I would just leave if it's a generic item, um, you know, I'm it's just going to leave the uh, leave it blank. And then, um, but I have my consignment uh, income and my consignment expense. Now I set it up as a as an expense account versus uh, cost of goods sold. Uh, of course, uh, Carrie would oh, probably tell me to. <laughs> we have a cat hmm? spotting cat sighting. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> One. Yeah, we need to do a, a cat pool during the the workshop Wednesdays. When are they going to show up? <laughs> during how many? The, how many will right? show up? How many spots? Exactly. There's one so far. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we've got our uh, our income and expense account set up on the item. Uh, we would do exactly the same thing. Uh, we would create a purchase order uh, for that. I don't know if I did that already. Have I think to have, it, yeah, um, I did. Yeah, so I did create the. You have to have at least, at least. Sorry to interrupt. You have to have at least the addition of plus to be able to do inventory and purchase orders. At least inventory. Yes. Okay. And and also classes. So and classes. Um, all okay. three of these things at least put you into into plus. Into plus. Um, right. Uh, so I have my generic item. Uh, put in the amount, and then you just have to modify the class. Uh, to be sure that if, if you're using the subclass situation. All right. Okay. Uh, so that's that. And then we sell it. So we got a new sales receipt. What do we have here? The bird sanctuary. We bought my consignment item. And then I'm going to put the, um, you know, the sales price of that. So let's say it's $500. Um, and then change the consignment to Bob so that I keep the class uh, in order. Okay. And then save and close. And then from my reports, I have, my, oh, I forgot to uh, do the bill. You're right. Oh. Okay, so. Good catch. <laughs> uh, but again, that, that, that consigner will be set up as a vendor. Uh, this is going to allow me just to add the, the purchase order to it and we do have the class the, so the class pulls over from the transaction and then we save and close that and then my profit and loss by class there's my Bob consigner uh, I can then customize this to only show the 
consignment income and expense accounts. And there we go. Same, uh, same, same thing. And then we can save that customization uh, for my consignment report and save it. So the next time it'll be in my, my customized uh, reports. Uh, so that's how you would handle that same situation in uh, in QuickBooks Online. Uh, we've shown that you how to do that in uh, desktop as well. And we've got the blog article in the comments here uh, so that you can review that uh, procedure uh, as you need. And this can be done in any version of desktop, mm -hmm. QBO plus and advanced, and point of sale pro and multi-store, not basic. So not simple start, not essentials, not point of sale basic, but the other, all the other ones you can do this with. Okay. So, um, so next week, uh, we're actually going to be doing um, bounced checks. <laughs> <laughs> so many cats when... <laughs> bounce by. Right. We'll see how many cat, cats bounce by. So we'll see you next week. Um, thanks for joining us again today, and uh, hope you have a great day. Bye. Have a good week. Thank <laughs> you.